I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I'm back with another video about M Cabinet, and I want to show you how you can use IRs with M Cabinet to kind of like edit the IRs and make them sound in the way you want them to sound. So I have something here. I'll show you. I have a few audio files at first, and I have this just a normal preset, uh, like Plexi or something. Let me turn on the reverb and delay here, but I'll use an IR here. So this is just an IR pack I bought a while ago, and I don't think they actually even sell this anymore. But anyways, I got it and I like it, but there's some things I don't like about it. It's just a little bit uh, rough in the high end, and there's a little bit too much low end. So I want to see if I can fix that. But first, before we do all that, let me just let you listen to what the IR sounds like. Now, I don't think that sounds that bad, but there's just something in the high end there that I don't like. It's a little bit scratchy. So, I want to see if I can use these IRs to come up with something better using M Cabinet. So, let's mute that and let's go into M Cabinet here. So, we open it up and it starts with this. I'm going to turn off this Resonator 1 here, like that. And to get all this into M Cabinet, we're going to load a profile and we're going to get that from that folder. So, just click here where it says Analyze IR Folder. And now, just look on your hard disk to wherever your IRs are. Okay, so here I have some. I'm going to use the 24-bit ones, but I don't think it really matters that much. I'll use the raw ones. And you see here, I could choose any of these, like the cap uh, center, cap outer. There's tons of these here. There's probably like hundreds of IRs in here. But I really just i am going to analyze all of these. Now, what this will do is it will make an average of all of these hundreds of IRs and put them together in here. So it won't just be one IR, it's the average of all of them, the EQ response together. So let's click OK. So as you saw there, through the magic of computers, it can analyze them all in a number of seconds. I think it took like four or five seconds, so it's not that long. And this is what we have here. So I'll let you hear this average quickly. So it sounds a little bit bassier than the original. I'll turn the volume down a little bit too. And it also has some like boxiness that I don't like. And that uh, high upper mid, like his sound I don't really like is still in there. So I'm going to do something here. This will hopefully help later. So I'm going to copy this and then move it over to B, paste, and just copy. So if you didn't know that, all the Melo production plugins can do that. We're just going to do that so we can A-B it quickly in the future. But I'm going back to A here, and the first thing I want to do is actually smooth this out. You see all these little jagged edges here? So this is causing some of the hissing sound. So let's hit this fresh, or profile smoothing, turn it all the way up, and if you look, oh, see, it really smoothed that out. So here is the before. So if you notice those upper mids, they sound much less harsh. So this is with the smoothing. Without the smoothing. So that upper mid, like, sound. <laughs> Sorry about that. Actually, you probably didn't appreciate those sounds. But anyways, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. It kind of got rid of those. Now, the next thing I might want to do here is just tilt it a little bit so it's not quite so bassy. So I'll play this and I'll adjust the tilt so you can kind of hear what this is doing. I think about three is enough. So that's good. And now from here, what I'm going to do next is go into this menu here and hit profile from current. So it's going to take those smooth settings and tilt settings and just change the profile to that. So here. Now we just bring these back and we have a new profile. Now what I usually like to do here is go to this where it says the profile presets 
and save this. So that way in the future, if I ever want to use this profile again, I can. I can just start from here. So let's hit preset. And I already have one here. So I think this is a vintage 30 with a E906 mic. Just replace it. There we go. So we have that now. Now the next part, we can either leave it like this and we can use the EQ to change it or we can try using one of the resonators. I'll use the resonator just because uh, I want to show it to you. Normally for this sound, I think this actually sounds okay and I might use just the EQ for this. If I was using a, a like clean sound, I might want to use the resonator more. But that's just personal preference. So open it up. So you see here we have the stereo on. I'll let you hear it with the stereo on first. That's cool, but I don't really want that. Now you see all these blue lines. So this is the what's coming out now, what it sounds like. But you think like, oh, there's too many of these. This is adding that kind of like rough sound to it again. And we can just smooth this out like this. And when we do this, it's going to act more like a normal EQ. Now we can change this also by clicking these. These are kind of like randomizers. If we don't want to do that, you can go into the presets and just choose one of these. But uh, let's try this and let's try going through the uh, different bass sounds. This, let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too bassy. Let's try increasing the treble. And a little bit more treble. See how that sounds. Also the mids, uh, this dip in here, I think is not so good. Actually, that sounds good, but I think I need more mids. See if this sounds better. Okay, that's pretty good. And if I want to do some advanced stuff like, oh, okay, there's like a huge spike here around like 150 or so. I can go into advanced and you see where this says decay. I can move that up and it'll kind of smooth things out for me if I like that. And I can do the same thing with the treble if I want, but the treble seems okay. So it seems fairly crunchy. Uh, from here, let's say I could do more if I wanted. Oh, add this other one and add more like resonances in there but for me this is good now from here what i might want to do is actually use the high pass filters so i'll listen to this and just loop it quickly and what i'm going to do is adjust the by maybe getting rid of some of the flub in the low end get rid of some of the hiss in the high end and then adjust the mids to where i like them so let's just do this i'll play it and you can just watch what i'm doing Okay, so that's what I did. I wanted to get rid of some of these boxy mids here and then also kind of push it up front by using these mids here. So you can do this however you want. For this, I'm just setting this however I like it. But of course, you don't have to make it sound like this. You can make it sound however you want. So if you want the opposite of this, you can do that too. You could also go in here and use some of the dynamic EQ if you wanted. Uh, there's all sorts of things you could do here. Uh, I made this in mono but you don't have to and so from here maybe i'll check this uh against the other one so actually first i'll show you the first profile we imported it before let's l listen what that sounded like versus the new one that sounds better to me and let's hear it on the lead example new one there we go and that's what I wanted 
another thing, I can check it against the first one also. So this is the actual impulse response. Sounds like this. New one. And let's listen to the lead sound. Versus the new one. So this is closer to what I want. It seems like this new one is actually a little bit lower in volume because I turned the output down, but I think you get the idea. I wanted to get rid of that uh, really top in sound, that kind of hissing. And I got rid of that. It sounds much better to me. It's, uh, it sounds like it's pushed forward a little bit more and it doesn't ha have as much like rumble in the low end. So if I like this, I can just save it as a preset up here. Or one thing I might want to do if I want to play this, let's say, uh, using a hardware modeler or if I wanted to load it directly into another piece of software, I go into menu here and click export IR and I can just put it wherever I want on my computer and then load it up into whatever hardware or software I want. So I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do with this. This one, I try to keep it fairly simple and uh, not use too much of the resonator here. If you think ah, I want even less, Click this depth here and you can move it up and down. So watch what's happening to the blue here. If you move it down. And then I can move it up and do more. But that's going to sound really terrible. I wouldn't do that. But <laughs> you can if you want. And for this type of thing, I would probably only use one resonator for like a distorted sound. But for a clean sound, I might want to use two resonators. And maybe even for something else like an acoustic guitar, IR, I might use three resonators or something. And probably a widener too to get more of a stereo sound. But that all depends on what you want and what you want to do. So if you like this, uh, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything I did, leave them down below. And check out all the other products and plugins at MelderProduction.com. Until next time, see you.